story with some very good reporting based on two sources with uh, knowledge of the specific deliberations. That's their terminology. That Roberts changed his vote only because of external pressure from the White House and from articles in the media. Now, if that's true, that Roberts based his decision not on the law, not on the Constitution, but on political considerations, my goodness, is that a breach of his duty? Well, it's a problem, and it's a mistake. And, and like, we can be honest about this and sort of uh, you know, split it down the middle. Courts have always paid attention to politics. The problem with this is that uh, Roberts did something that, that the other justices usually haven't done, which is he didn't hide it very well. There was, it's very difficult to explain this decision in terms other than him basically chickening out for political reasons. Right. And one of my big problems with it is that uh, you know, he, he says he, or people say that he was trying to protect the integrity and the reputation of the court. Well, the, the majority of Americans who don't like Obamacare didn't, and who had big problems with it, they care about the reputation of the court too, and he damaged the, the court's reputation in their eyes in order to bolster his reputation with a bunch of inside the beltway pundits um, and you know, sort of yeah. the mainstream media, and I think that's a big problem. Well, I wonder if it backfired. I mean, according to CBS, again, at least one conservative justice approached Roberts, tried to get him to explain why the switch, and walked away completely unsatisfied with the response. So, in other words, if Roberts' motivation was to protect the integrity of the high court and his own reputation as chief justice might the disclosure of all the leak of all of this and his alleged motivation might that badly damage both his reputation and the integrity of the court yeah look i think it's a great point and it, it tells you something about how rancorous this was because normally it's amazing how tight-lipped the supreme court is they don't leak these sorts of things and yeah. so the people who were on record talking to Jan Greenberg from CBS uh, about this, they're clearly disgruntled about what, what Roberts has done. And I, I think this all just goes to the fact that at the end of the day, justices should, should vote based upon what their convictions and what their reading of the law was. And it's yeah. very difficult to read this decision without concluding that he basically reverse engineered it. He said, this is the finding I want to come to. This is the conclusion I want to have. I want to uphold this. So let me rationalize backwards from that conclusion. And it, it's not convincing anybody. It, you know what else is important? In fact, you pointed this out in one of your columns, that Roberts upheld the law as constitutional for the very reasons the president passionately rejected it. That is to say, as a tax. Are you therefore uh, surprised or not surprised the White House is still insisting it's not a tax? And in fact, Jack Lew, the White House uh, you know, chief of staff, went so far over the weekend to say, oh no, the court didn't say it was because it's a tax. Right. Well, I mean, the White House has put in a very, I mean, this is one of these consolation prizes that people keep talking about, about the Roberts decision. You know, it, it guts the liberal interpretation of the Commerce Clause. It sets up a political issue by calling it a tax. Um, the problem with it is, well, that's all well and good, and as a conservative who wants Barack Obama to lose, I'm delighted by these sort of silver linings to it. But at the end of the day, I would much rather Roberts have simply ruled the way he, would, you know, he should have and consistent with his own record and simply at least thrown out the mandate. Uh, but, yeah, it puts the Obama White House in an uncomfortable position, although it looks like Mitt Romney's team is determined to make it less uncomfortable for the president, as we saw yesterday with Eric Fernstrom basically saying, oh, no, Mitt Romney doesn't think it's a tax either. Yeah, uh, snatching uh, defeat from the jaws of victory.